When 27-year-old Kennedy Ndwiga left formal employment as an accountant in 2011 to start his own business, he did not anticipate that major banks would not give him a loan. At his lowest point, Kennedy had to sell his own household goods to get by, but he found relief in a microfinance institution. Initially it was difficult uh, sourcing for capital because most of the banks and financial institutions are looking for collateral. That's land, that's uh, log books, and something most youths don't have. So it was not until, so I tried a number of financial institutions, but then I came across Rafiki. I gave them my vision, and then um, they understood where I was going, where we were coming from, and then that's when they gave me our first facility, uh, just based on, on, on our award. So we started with a small facility of 100, uh, of 100,000 shillings, Kenya shillings, and uh, from there we grew slowly. Uh, soon after it was followed by another one of 300, and that one now really boosted us. Kennedy now owns two shops and employs five staff. He is now eligible for more than 5 million shillings in credit from his financier. Central Bank of Kenya statistics show the loan book of the country's nine licensed MFIs grew by 70% to 26 billion shillings in the last three years. Similar growth to that of the 43 banks in the East African nation. MFIs are come to fill in a gap that has been left by commercial banks because uh, there is a large percentage of the population in Kenya that is underbanked or unbanked. So uh, the estimates are that only 40% of Kenyans have access to formal uh, formal banking or formal levels of finance. So you're not just talking about banking, you're also talking about access to insurance, you're just talking about uh, access to mortgages. So a very uh, so the formal uh, commercial bank space actually precludes or excludes a large percentage of Kenyans. So I think it's very natural that uh, you will find that uh, the MFIs will fill in. Uh, they are very much geared towards meeting uh, the segment of the population that you call the bottom of the pyramid. Some of the leading players in the financial sector right now uh, came from the microfinance uh, uh, background. I think the mi microfinance institutions, uh, and particularly the deposit technique microfinance institutions, which are now regulated, are playing a leading role in so far as uh, 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 enhancing financial inclusion is concerned. So they have their space, and I think they are doing their part in so far as financial inclusion is concerned. The challenge to them is really also to uh, go into the space of uh, partnership with other institutions with a view to seeing that now they mobilize more resources and they lend some of those resources within a given uh, regulatory regime. And I think they are doing their bit. The high demand of credit and easier access to MFIs has driven the likes of Rafiki Microfinance to record significant growth. The first year we grew 300%. Um, the second year we grew 200%. And we're focusing to grow 130% because the base now, the number of base that you're growing with is much larger. Um, but then we're seeing we're able to grow in about three years of operation. We'll have grown an organization that's close to 10 billion in total assets. And, th and that today is, is quite equivalent uh, to, to about, uh, it, it could be rated among 20 largest banks. Uh, the 10 billion is not a small number. In less than three years, Rafiki has a total asset base of 3.5 billion shillings. They have plans to increase the current 18 branches to 30 by the end of the year with 62,000 customers. The economy has been growing uh, and, and I think more and more there is more buying power in the hands of Kenyans. I think uh, the last 20, you know, 11 years uh, the economy has been growing. There is more money in the hands of people. But um, this money to be spent, there, there is, it means um, the guys who are getting into entrepreneurship there is also a livelihood that's coming in there. And small businesses uh, need, need capital. A majority of the challenges that they have, apart from uh, managing the skills, is capital. And that capital, that's where now access to capital is, uh, comes in. Over the last three decades, MFIs have evolved from socially funded enterprises by non-governmental organizations to regulated financial institutions with sustainable business models. As the microfinances now start to scale up, they now start eating into the space that the banks are. So the, so the banks that, that bank the lower end of the market, they start now encroaching on that space. So I think what is also happening is that uh, MFIs are now having to compete for deposits, for funding with commercial banks. So uh, they are having to become more innovative in terms of raising deposits. Um, 
uh, marketing. Uh, they, 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 they are also having to play the same games that the commercial banks are doing. We cannot say we are totally independent of uh, money from uh, development financial institutions or private equity funds are from uh, abroad. Uh, we still, some percentage of us is still dependent on funds coming from abroad. Um, there is a financing risk that comes with that because you're getting money in US dollars, you don't give loans in Kenya in US dollars. So you could get money and somebody tells you I'm giving you money at 7% but you lend at 18%. The truth of the matter is this money you've borrowed at uh, between 4 to 7%, uh, you go and do a hedge that costs on the upwards of 12%. So you end up with extremely highly expensive money. The wide reach of commercial banks around the country and ability to attract cheaper deposits is the main advantage that banks have over MFIs. But banks are, however, risk averse. I think one big space that the microfinancers can play is also in housing, providing affordable housing uh, over the long term. Because if you look at the average mortgage in the market, you're talking about 5.6 million Kenyan shillings. I think that is way above uh, the reach of the middle class and also way above the reach of uh, the common money on the ground. So if, uh, the M so if the MFIs can be able to package uh, a mortgage that is 1.5 million or even less than that, then I think then uh, the MFIs will be very much in business. For borrowers like Kennedy Ndwiga, microfinancers took the risk enabling him to live his dream.